Hey guys, welcome back to Planet J. Judah, and today is for my daughter-in-law's sister. So, I had made Keely a headscarf that she actually wore to school and was asked to take it off because they considered it a hat. So, she asked me if I could make something smaller, and this is what I came up with. So, I did it basically what I did was a granny rectangle and added ties at the on either side so this was my first one and I wasn't too sure how I liked it I, I thought it was a little too short but you know it actually or not long enough I should say but it actually might be so then I started doing like this long and I thought that was actually kind of too long so then I did this, which isn't much shorter than this one, but it is definitely a tad shorter. I don't know if you can tell, but here's the bottom of this one, and here's the bottom of that one. But it is definitely longer than this first one. So then I did this one, which somehow came out even smaller even though I did it with the same amount of chains which I will get into anyways bottom line is I made all of these this one I actually did a day and I made it with a smaller hook than I did the others but this is Keely's and hers is only one um, colorway it just it's a stripey colorway so this is how it came out and I would have done it similar to this one but when I started doing it it just didn't feel right so I did just the one colorway and on hers I actually do uh, two single Two rows of single or two rounds of single crochet at the end whereas this one is just one and then all the others are just one then I also just because my mom wanted something that she could wear because she wears headbands but she wears them right here so it needed to be small and so I came up with this but this is actually too thick I need to use a, a probably a fingering weight or even thread to do my mom's the way that I want to do it. But this also is cute as a headband. So as you can see, this one is two rows of granny stitches, whereas this one is just one. And I did this in just one color. You can do this in two colors. Most of these I did in two colors, like this one I just did two colors, but I did the middle and then alternated. So here's another one, which is using that same yarn where I just did the whole center as the one color and then did the border uh, and strap as the other color. But then I started to experiment by doing these because these are these obviously these are solid so I did the center portion and then the other two and then brought the center portion back to tie it all together so <laughs> basically what I did is was a granny rectangle and then added straps did I already say that I don't know maybe I did but today I'm gonna show you how I did this so let's bring you on down and let's get started. First, I'm going to show you what colors I'm going to use today or for this video. I'm going to use Yes Mom. I do have plenty and I still need to make your your coasters, but I'm using it for using this for today. So this is Christmas. I'm not sure. I don't I don't know what the colorway is, but it's definitely like Christmas colors. So it might be mistletoe. And this I'm using 100% cotton, the peaches and cream, and then my other color is going to be red. So this 
was done with 100% cotton. And you can really see the detail as well as this black and gray and white one that was also cotton and it's very flimsy compared to the acrylic but this is the acrylic it has i think it has a softer look to it and it's a lot stiffer even although this one is also acrylic but i think it's just the yarn that i used for this one that is not as stiff as the other acrylic and then this is also uh cotton you definitely can see the stitches a lot better with the cotton than you can with acrylic but either way you can use whatever yarn you choose to and i did most excuse me i did most of these except for the uh burgundy, mint, and yellow. I did this one with a 4.5 millimeter hook, and I did these all with a 5.0 millimeter hook. So I'm trying to get, but I keep, sorry, I keep dropping stuff. I'm trying to get a little bit longer than this, but shorter than this. So in this one, I have 12, if I count the clusters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, this one should have 14, so it was just a little too long. Uh, this one is 13, but so is this one, so I'm not sure, it, maybe my tension was way different, because this one's actually even shorter as you can see, um, but this one was 14, this one was 13. I've kind of settled on 13, but I'm trying to make it a little bit smaller, so I'm using the smaller hook. Um, I'm going to be using the five, sorry, 4.5, 4.5 millimeter hook for today. This one, the five point millimeter hook is probably just fine because it's literally just the very middle part of the granny rectangle so and you can also i just didn't you can also do another color to give it a border i just didn't do that i was just trying to experiment and see if this would look good here but it's too big it's too big sorry mom i'm working on it i'm gonna get you I'll get you a band, headband like this, but a lot thinner. Anyway, now that I've wasted a lot of time, I'm going to put these out of the way and get started. All right, so for this one, I'm going to use the multicolor as my center. I'm not going to do the very middle. I'm just going to do it like um, just the two colors doing the granny stitch in the multicolor and then the border and straps in the red. So for this, oh, I also have four uh, safety pins for um, stitch markers that are at the ready. And of course, you'll need your hook, scissors, and a needle to tie in all the ends and cut your yarn and all of that good stuff. So. First, we're going to start with a slip knot. And for this, I actually, because I was having issues, I'm putting my first safety pin in so that I make sure that I get this uh, hole chain go to the end of it um, just to anyways <laughs> my brain <sighs> that is so me such is life oh here we go let's close that up a little bit and I'm going to chain 33 plus 2 so that will be 35 because you need to do it in a divisible by 3 so 
however long you want it to be, your granny rectangle needs to be, your chains need to be divisible by three. So I'm gonna do 33, oh, and, and of course the plus two. So I'm gonna do 33 plus two, so that's 35. All right, so we have our chain of 35. We are going to do single crochets all the way to the end. We're gonna skip those first two. So that's your two that you wanted to have extra. So we're gonna skip the first two chains and go into that third chain and do a single crochet. But before I do that, just to make it easier on me, I'm going to mark the chain two, even though I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna mark the chain two with this safety pin so that I know where, where it is when I come back to it. All right, so we are skipping the first two and going into that third one, and we're gonna do a single crochet. Tighten her up a little bit, there we go. And now we are going to finish doing single crochets all the way down to the end. All right, so at this point, if you wanted to change your color, you could fasten off, tie the two ends together, weave them in, and start your next color. But we are going to continue by, excuse me, we are going to continue by turning our work. I am going to do a double stack single crochet in this first stitch or if you want to, you can chain three. But like I said, I'm going to do a double stacked, double stacked single crochet in that first stitch. And then I'm going to do two double crochets in the same stitch, thus creating our first cluster. Now I'm going to skip two and then do three double crochets into that third stitch. And we're gonna continue doing that all the way down, skipping two and doing our granny cluster into the third of every third stitch. So again, we're going to skip two, go to the third, do a granny, granny cluster.
Okay, as you can see, we've made it to the end and we are we have two chain or two stitches and then that chain two space. So we are going to go into the chain two space and that will create our corner. Take safety pin out now. So we are going to do three double crochet in the same spot. Chain two, making our corner, three double crochet into that same spot. Chain two, making our second corner and three double crochet into the same spot. All right, so now we're gonna go back down the other side and you can either do three double crochet into the, the chain, <laughs> sorry, or as I'm doing it, I'm doing, um, excuse me, I'm gonna do three double crochet into the same spot as this uh, cluster. So instead of going right here into this chain where I would have something in the, have this space in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and go into where the other cluster is. And you're just going to follow that all the way down to the other end. All right, so now we're going to create our other corner by going into that same space as our last or our first cluster. I can get this out of the way. Here we go. So we've made our first cluster, chain two. We're gonna make our second cluster into the same space. Whoops, I didn't actually do that in the same space, did I? Alrighty, do that over again. There we go, there we go. Aim two. Do our 
top cluster. Chain two. And now we're going to join in that first double stacked single crochet right here. Oops, if I can get it in there. I joined with the slip stitch. So at this point, you can fasten off, weave in your ends and start a new color. Or I'm gonna just go ahead and start my next round in this same color. So I'm gonna turn my work. I'm gonna do a double stacked single crochet here. Mark my first I forgot to do on the other one for the first round. Now I'm going to do two more double crochets. And that is the start of our next corner on our next row. So now I'm just gonna go into the chain two space here. I'm not gonna chain, I'm just gonna go straight into it with a double crochet, a double crochet, and do two more, creating our first cluster in this corner. Chain two, two more double, three more double crochets, sorry about that. And finishing our corner on this side. And then we're going to simply work it just like any other granny square in the second row. We're going to do clusters in between each open space. So now we're at the corner, we're going to do two clusters with a chain two in between. Oh, sorry, we're doing the same thing in the other corner, two clusters with a chain two in between. Then we will be jumping right back into granny clusters in each open space. Okay, and now we are back at the other corner. So we're going to chain two into the chain two space with the other cluster, with our first cluster. I'm sorry, we're gonna go straight into the chain two with a granny cluster into the same space as the first one.
Then we're going to chain two because we need to finish that corner. And at this point, I'm going to cut my yarn because we are now going to be moving into the border and the straps. So I will be cutting my yarn, doing a seamless join, and then getting ready to start my border. You don't have to do a seamless join here. I just like to because it makes it smoother to me and easier to work into the join as opposed to just doing a slip stitch. So to do a seamless join, you've got your last bit and you pulled it through and you've got it tied or put onto the needle and you're gonna go into, oops, <laughs> as I dropped it. All right, you're gonna go into your first double crochet or du double stacked single crochet in between both. And actually, I want it to go the other way. I'm gonna pull that back through. Let go. And the reason why I want it to go the other way is because then I have it set up to where I can weave in my end to this, our first uh, stitch, and then tie them together and then weave in the ends. So we're going to go through the two loops. There we go. In through the two loops. I'm going to go ahead and take out my safety pin. And then we're going to come down through the last chain stitch that we made. And that will create our seamless join. So now what I'm gonna do is, did I do that right? Might have tied it wrong. Oh well. Oh, there we go. And let's see. Hold on while I fix this. <laughs> there we go. I've got it back to where I have it in the two. I think I just twisted it. Now I'm going to go in that last loop that I made for the chain two. Oh, this time I didn't go the right direction. Dang it. Maybe that's what I did wrong. I don't know why I'm making it so difficult. Oh my goodness. Go the way I need you to go. <laughs> There we go. Not twist it and knot it extra. Oh well, I'm gonna, <laughs> it's just gonna get covered up. So it's been, I don't know, I must have did it wrong, twisted it, did it, did something, but it's gonna, it's not gonna matter. So I'm not gonna worry about it. 
And then I'm simply going to weave in my end until I get over to this side. Trying not to pull too hard on this because although it's already kind of messed up right there, I just, I don't want it to be too, too taut. So now we're going to keep going. Come on. There we go. Gonna go through and out where that one is. And I'm simply going to knot it. I knot it three times. You don't have to. But to me, I don't know. It's weird. Three times makes me feel secure. More secure. That's if I can even get it knotted in the first place. There we go. There we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Whew. Okay, and then I'll weave in my ends, and then I will be right back when I get the border started. getting ready to join our border. I'm going to start with a slip stitch and join with a standing single crochet. We are going to start at this end. I'm going to start in the chain two spot. Oh, come on. doubled it up there. All right, now let's see if we can get this in. <laughs> we'll get this started. All right. So we've got our first single crochet and we're going to do in each chain two spot, we're going to do three single crochets. But for right now, I'm starting with two. I'm going to do the first two here. And then I'm into, I know this is a weird, because of the join was weird. Oh my goodness. All right. So I'm marking my first single crochet. Just so that I make sure I know where to go into when I make go to start to make the strap part. Come on. And I'm going to work my way into each stitch doing single crochets. So I've done the first two in this corner and then the one, two, three. Oops. Work my way to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's I should have I should have eight, but because I messed up right there, I think that's why. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to continue on. This one is just, it's probably going to be for me anyways. 
So now I'm going into the chain two space. I'm doing my first two single crochets. I'm gonna mark the second one indicating where I want to stop my first row of the straps. Do my third and I'm going to single crochet all the way down and back around marking the two corners the two middle stitches in in the uh, the chain two spaces for my strap So we have reached our corner. We're gonna do three single crochets. Put, excuse me, putting a stitch marker in that second or middle single crochet. Making sure we get into that stitch. Okay, so we're gonna mark that middle single crochet. So that one wasn't a corner that one was so this one's the middle work our way across Going into that corner again. And marking that middle one. So that one was not a corner piece. This one was, so that one's the second for the middle. Through. Oh, in between. There we go. All right, so now we are marked for when I need to attach to make the rest of the strap. I'm gonna work my way back down to the other side and we'll get ready to start that strap. So we have made it to the other end. We need to finish off this corner by doing our last single crochet in that corner. Then we're going to slip stitch into that first the first single crochet to close. So now we've gone around our border and now we're going to go ahead and start doing our straps. Now for this we're just going to continue on. We're not going to cut any yarn or anything. We're just going to continue on. We're going to do a chain one and go right back into that first stitch and do a single crochet and we're going to single crochet all the way across 
until we get to the other safety pin. Now I'm going to go ahead just so that I don't have to worry about counting. I'm going to mark that first stitch so that I don't accidentally. <laughs> Obviously it's going to start to make um, be noticed or it will be obvious where the end is. But for right now, I'm going to put my stitch marker or safety pin in that first stitch. So we're working our way across. We've made it to the safety pin. We're gonna go into that stitch with a single crochet. Chain one and turn. And so now on this, we want to create a triangle so we're going to skip that first stitch and go right into the second stitch and that will be our first decrease and we'll just work our way all the way across to the other safety pin and i'm going to go ahead and mark this one there we go So each time that we do a round or a row, I should say, we should be decreasing by one. Chain one and turn, skip that first stitch and go into the second. you always work to the end don't skip that last one there we go chain one turn and single crochet into the second stitch and you should start seeing it form a triangular shape So this is what you should be seeing right now is this triangular shape and now we're going to simply just do 60 59 uh, chains and then I will show you what to do when I get to the top or the end. Right, so I've done 59. I'm gonna cut my yarn. I'm not gonna pull the loop through because I'm going to that create my 60th uh, chain and then pull it through. And this part isn't necessary. I just like to do it because I feel like it cleans it up a little. I go in between the bumps in the back a couple of times. I just kind of weave my way through. Probably I do at least four times if this step is totally unnecessary, you really don't have to do it. I just feel like it cleans it up a little bit better. I don't know. That's just me. And then we're simply just going to tie the end in a knot. And 
as close to the tip as possible. Um. There we go. And pull it as tight as possible. And then you're going to just cut off the end. And voila, strap number one is done. So now we're just going to go over to the other side. Move stuff out of my way. And so we know that this is our wrong wrong end even though it's not going to really matter um we want to make it the wrong end so we're going to whatever side you need to start on you're going to start on i'm left-handed so i start on the left side and we're going to get our yarn again do a slip knot And once again, join where that safety pin is. Once I get my hook in there, I'm gonna take the safety pin out and we're gonna do our standing single crochet. Oh, oops. Come on, hold through. It's a little tight and doesn't, there we go. <laughs> Don't ask. I have no idea. So there's our first single crochet. And then we are going to do the same thing as we did on the other side, working our way back and forth until we get that pyramid. I'm going to go ahead and stop it right here and I will be back when I'm done. All right, here we go. We are all finished. Both straps are ready to be tied and the headband is ready to be worn. Isn't that cute? Oh my goodness, I love it. I really do, I really do. And I really like the multicolor. I'm not particularly fond of the striping colors because, I don't know. I. Let me, one second. Okay, so this was the striping uh, yarn. And albeit, I really do, it is really pretty. I just don't like the way the colors play out compared to if it's just like a multi. Uh, let me see, there's the black one. The black one is also striped. So see how it kind of, it's like white, gray, white, gray, and then the border is black. Um, and this one, this one is multi. I have a solid color in the middle, so that's why it looks the way it does here. This one is a multi. I just, I like the way it plays out better this way. So it's either that or I would prefer if I can find it. Oh, where is it? What did I do? My favorite one, I can't find it. Oh my goodness. Oh, nope, that's the striking one. Well, that's weird. All right, hold on. One more second, let me see if I can find it. Oh my goodness, I was literally, it fell in between, so I was kind of sitting on it. But the solid, I really like the solid because it gives this look. I really like the way this looks. So I prefer a multi or a solid as opposed to the stripe. They all come out really cool. I really do like them all regardless. But um, 
I don't know. I'm just, I just like this. And I think this would go really cute with a Christmas outfit. And then there's this one, which is similar to this one. I just didn't do that center. I only did the two colors, which is the dark green and then the white, or not white, yellow, the light yellow. So that being said, we are done. I hope you have enjoyed today's video, <laughs> even with all of my little chaos. And if you did, hit the like button. And if you'd like to be notified of any and all future uploads, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click all on the notification bell. And with that, remember, gravity works, guys.